a view. The, the trees look nice too. <laughs> yeah, don't try this don't, at home. Don't do this until unless you know what you're doing. Yeah. Don't do this unless you have, you know, like we were talking about earlier, of go, Whoop. go through the levels. Yeah, baby steps, baby, baby steps. steps. Yeah. All right, so we are at the entrance of the Mount Rainier National Park, and we are about to go on a little, little walkity walk. So I'm actually not 100% positive the exact distance that we're going on this one. All right, before we head out, a little backpacking tip. Uh, dump pouches, one of the most important things for hiking, even though I'm wearing civilian attire. Uh, dump pouches, and I'll keep my water bottle attached to my belt. And then I'll keep my water right here with a water filter inside of it. Since I'm in the Pacific Northwest, we can find water pretty much anywhere. All right, one more tip. Uh, ounces lead to pounds, pounds lead to pain. So I leave my wallet here and then I'll just take the important stuff. Make sure you take the relays for your fuel pump or really any relay or fuse that is going to actually hinder the vehicle to where it can't be stolen. I've had this bitch stolen before. It's not fun. So uh, this vehicle cannot function without these and these come with me. All right, this is just a test, just to see how this audio sounds. I might Agent, not, you're seeing this. I might not even put this in the video. We're gonna get this on camera. Okay, we're recording. Me, Huck, Huck, Huckathy, Huck, Mick Huckathy is not taking any responsibility for the loss of the microphones. Okay, microphones are right there and that's where it is. They, they were placed by Senior Grill and <laughs> not by. So, this is take three of trying to explain what we're doing. I feel like I liked the last take, but apparently the camera wasn't rolling. That was my fuck up. <laughs> oh wait, oh, I said the F word too early on in a YouTube video. No, we'll, we'll, have, we'll have some B-roll footage before this. We'll, we'll be fine. We'll, we'll, get, we'll get our time in. Yeah, right. we just can't say the C word now. Well, they can't say the C word. Yeah, apparently the C word is, is bad as the N word. What, I don't what even if, know, what if am we... I allowed? I hate the N word, by the way. <laughs> just say it, either say it or don't. Um, wow, what a great way to start a YouTube video. <laughs> Anyway, so what we are doing today is a glacier dip. If you're not aware of what that is, we are going out of our way to do one of the most uncomfortable things that a man can do physically to himself. And there's actual recorded legitimate health benefits from doing ice dips, ice baths, glacier dips, etc. Um, if you follow anyone in the fitness community, if you follow anyone in the sports community, uh, ice baths are a huge thing. They are not enjoyable while you're doing it for most people. Uh, that, that opinion could vary, but a glacier dip, uh, what we're doing is going into this with a I, I, I want to phrase this as least cringe as possible because I'm, I'm, I'm trying to, I'm trying to be self-aware. Once again, trying. Uh, allow me. Okay, go for it. Monkey men go for a walk. Monkey men go in cold water. Monkey men enjoy life. Monkey men lift heavy rock, sad head voice go away. Yes. See, it's that simple. Um. So, lethally poor mindset. A lot of the training that we do, a lot of the events that we go on, we were doing this exact same thing when Huck and I were both working nine to fives. We would get off of work and we would go right into PT, workouts, runs. We'd go out in the mountains late at night. We'd sleep a little bit less that night. Add to the suffering. Little bird tracks. Oh yeah, little birdie. He went tweet tweet. Squirrel! Oh, squirrel! <laughs> Just so you're aware, this video might be a little broken up. It might be a little bit jumbled. Um, it is fairly cold out where we're at. Uh, if you couldn't tell by all the snow and ice. So our batteries are dying pretty quickly. Now, thankfully, I have a pouch made by ODGG. Oh my goodness. Um, <laughs> And that's where I keep all my batteries, right here in my dump pouch. But, like I was saying uh, in the previous clip, 
the lethally poor mindset is that it does not take a lot of money. It does not take a lot out of your day-to-day -day life, or at least it shouldn't, to be a stronger and better man. Anyone, absolutely anyone, can come out in the mountains and suffer on their free time. You can get off of work. I don't care what job you're working, and you can go to a gym. Absolutely anyone, I don't care who you are, you can eat a little bit better, have less energy drinks, have less fast food, pay for a gym membership. Okay, cool, you can't pay for a gym membership? Guess what? Rocks and logs literally exist. I don't care who you are, you can find a way to be a better man. Coping that, oh, I'll just buy my way into success, that is not the lethally poor mindset. It is that anyone can be an asset, anyone can be lethal no matter how poor you are and I want to be as strong capable fast and knowledgeable as I logically can be now that being said we still enjoy creature comforts uh, we still play video games from time to time we still have halo land parties we, we still have drinks on occasion we still get fast food on occasion we are not perfect we are flawed men and that's okay i'm never going to be perfect i'm not striving to be perfect i'm striving to be a better man every single day and you know what some days i'm going to fail and the next day i'm going to try again and i'm going to continue just doing what i can to be a better man so we put ourselves through these, these situations, we put ourselves through little mini missions. We put ourselves through struggles and suffering, just doing what we can to be better men. And it's that simple. People try to make, people, people try to make what we do seem so bizarre. But as, as Huck said, you want, would you like to go into your, what you're talking about with your grandma? Here. Oh yes, of course. Uh, are you referring to when I told my grandma, right? My grandma grew up um, very poor. Um, her mother was an immigrant. He escaped from the Iron Curtain, Yugoslavia. So my family has known hardships and has known what it's like to live under a tyrant and in shitty times. Um, I told my grandma that I am not like the people of today. I am more like the people of 200 years ago. I'm, I'm a person from 200 years ago, basically what I said. And she's like, yeah, just, yeah. Straight up just agreed with me on that. So with, with that, and hold on, hold up, actually. Trying to keep that, that mindset of, in, in today's day and age, you, you are not a modern man. And you shouldn't think of yourself as a modern man. You are a man. Maybe you're a woman, I don't, I don't give a shit. You are a human being and you have the capability of resilience and power. And you just need to harness that. Anyone can do it, literally anyone. And even if you are disabled, even if you're broken, even if your, your leg is cut off, I don't care what's wrong with you. You can be an asset. You can still do something. Okay, cool. You can't come out here and hike for miles. You can do something. I refuse to believe, who, no matter who you are, I refuse to believe that you cannot be an asset to a team. That you can't be an asset to your family. There is always something that you can do to better yourself, no matter what it is. There is something that you can do to better yourself. Um, if you've ever watched the movie, Rain of Fire, there was a guy that he used to build uh, glass furnaces for a living before the apocalypse. And what he did is he was the plumber for this castle that if there was ever a dragon attack, they had water throughout the entire castle. Now I realize that's a very mytho mythological concept, right? But it, it's that same philosophy of, I can be an asset, I can have some skill to bring to a team. The lethally poor mindset. Uh, oh, and I just 
brain dump, what I was talking about. Uh, yeah, got it, I lost it. Becoming an asset, becoming um, physically capable, mentally capable of overcoming whatever challenges there is to overcome. Um, my father never knew how to swim. He was a baseball player in college and high school. He played baseball, he played tennis. He never touched the water, never went in the water, just never learned how to swim. And he just kind of grew up with just kind of a fear of the water because he's, you know, it's the unknown for him, right? Um, just this year, I thought, hey, dad, I'm gonna teach you how to swim. You know, in high school, my sport was water polo and I did swim team, so that's kind of my sport. So I'm like, it's a great way to exercise. It's a great way to get cardio, especially for someone who's getting older. Um, swimming is great. I mean, even for the young, everyone, everyone should be swimming. I advocate for swimming 100%. Uh, but yeah, he didn't know how to swim, but he agreed to come to the pool with me for me to teach him how to swim because he wanted to better himself. So he came consistently every week. He started off literally not knowing what to do. He was just standing there in the shallow end, just like, okay, cool, I'm in the water now, what? I'm like, all right, well, let's see if you can float on your back. Just sinks down immediately. Okay, cool, let's try kicking. Can you kick? Can you doggy paddle? Just sinking. But then just little tiny improvements over the course of months now, he can swim breaststroke across the pool. Like it's nothing. So that's just kind of the mindset you have to have is, okay, cool. I cannot do this thing. It might be very difficult, but with consistency and with putting your mind to it, having the dedication to actually get shit done, it will help you out and you will be able to accomplish whatever it is you want to accomplish. And I know that's very basic bullshit life advice that you know someone in high school or college probably told you, but it's true. It is very much true. And that kind of mindset still applies to every aspect of life. That thing's fucking huge. Go stand next to that. Ah, tree. Hold, hold on, wait. So anyway, uh, I just wanna let you guys know, even if you're old, even if you feel like you're slowing down, uh, and I have mad respect for my dad for this. I know you're watching dad, I love you. I have mad respect for him because he's like, okay, well, things are getting harder to do but he's still going to try and do it and he's still gonna put an effort and step way out of his bubble. Like that was way out of his bubble. I never thought I'd be able to do that. I've been trying for years and I finally got him to do it. To step out of his bubble and actually try. And once he tried, he did it. And we're gonna keep doing it. It's all those small little, little tiny, little victories. It doesn't have to be, you're not gonna get anything overnight. It's the small victories that count. And those small victories will build up day after day. So it's just constantly, slowly building yourself up and building each other up. And that's the key. That's the lethally core mindset. Just taking whatever you have and just having the mindset to just do it. So another thing with, uh, with lethally core that we have thought up is sometimes you literally need and I, I know this sounds cliche, but you need to shoot your shot. You need to fuck around and find out. You need to, okay, you silly, I'm still gonna send it. You need to have that philosophy of, I'm going to do my best regardless of the outcome. I feel like not enough people in, in our, age bracket you know what even no uh, not enough people today alive have that thought process of you silly i'm still gonna send it <laughs> still gonna fucking send it like okay cool i might fail but what if i don't cool i might embarrass myself but what if i don't what if what if i succeed what if i try enough times and give it my all that eventually it clicks and here we fucking are but of you fail and you fail and you fail and you fail and then finally you failed enough that you can't get it wrong 
You fucked it up every possible way that now you know this is how I do this. And, and you can use that mindset with literally anything. Absolutely fucking anything. I would also like to say that the blue snowshoes, yes, I realize they're not tactical. They are very inexpensive. <laughs> they are Costco brand. And we can thrash the hell out of them and not have to worry about it. If you're looking at uh, snowshoes, highly recommend, recommend the MSR Ascent, uh, the Lightning Ascent to be specific. That is the snowshoe that I recommend. That is the, the cheapest snowshoe that I would, I would probably recommend for long-term use. Uh, I've, I've seen them take an absolute beating, but I really like the Costco snowshoes because we spent, what, 60 bucks? Per pair about yeah and I don't know how many snowshoeing uh, outings we've gotten out of these things now so there are some things when it comes to being lethally poor that you need to accept that this is a consumable item now if you play video games you know what a consumable item is it means something that's going to wear down no matter what you do every time you use it it's going to wear down it's gonna break so these wool gloves, these are a consumable item. Eventually, these are not gonna be wearable anymore and I'm probably just gonna use them either to patch something else. So cut this, cut out sections and then sew it into something else or maybe I just might burn it, who knows? But you need to start thinking better about being poor and that it's okay. Times are getting harder, food's getting more expensive. You need to start being better about being poor. You need to start thinking about uh, renewable food, buying seeds, getting into gardening. I don't care if you're in a fucking apartment, you can get into gardening. You can grow your own food. You can save money that way. Yes, it takes a little bit of investment. I don't care. There are some things as well that if you save up your money and you buy quality, you're gonna spend less money overall because you keep buying shitty stuff, that consumable time is gonna be a hell of a lot less. So you buy something, you buy a quality product, it's going to last so much longer and you're gonna spend less money in the long haul, especially when it comes to training, especially when it comes to training. You know, like don't, don't go out and spend your money on these, these cheap, disgusting handguns, right? Buy something that fucking works. Lock, if, maybe? If, if it's, you know, over $600, usually, I realize there's some wiggle room there, but if usually it's over $600 for a handgun, it's gonna be quality. Um, here in our group, we highly recommend Glock 19s and Glock 17s. That's what we use. All of our mags are interchangeable. Most of our parts are interchangeable. If you're running with a team, if you have a group of friends, you wanna think about, do my parts work with their parts? Can we swap magazines? Can we swap ammunition? That is another thing about being poor, is you want to help each other. So, okay, cool. My friend can't afford this product. I'm going to buy it for myself. He's going to use it. So, if I'm a little bit better off in the group, I'm gonna start buying things and investing in my group. So like, uh, I'm not gonna name him, but one of our guys, he doesn't have night vision money. Guess what I've done? I have a PVS 14. When we go out in the hills, I issue that out to him. Uh, another guy, I give him a night vision camera. Is it the best? Absolutely fucking not. But it has the capability of something. It is better than the night eye. Uh, we're gonna get into night vision in our next video, so I'm not gonna go too far into that. But our philosophy with training, our philosophy with going to the gym, our philosophy with our, our diets is absolutely treat yourself, right? Enjoy fun things from time to time. Make sure that you've earned it. That is the number one thing that I can say about anything. Um, like I, I said, Huck and I still go from Wen to Wendy's from time to time. We'll hit up Taco Bell from time to time. I try to get the, you know, a healthier thing on the menu, but even at that, and I realize it's, it's soy. I realize it's bad for me, 
I'm aware of this. Um, I'm going to chug water and I'm going to earn that meal. Um, because sometimes, sometimes having little things is morale boosts, right? That's huge. Oh, That's yeah. absolutely massive. And you need to think about your own morale and you need to think about being able to pump yourself up, right? There's sometimes you have to take small L's for the big W. Uh, and, and, and you can, you can use that philosophy with absolutely anything, but you know, Huck and I, we make priorities. Some things are absolutely priorities. Like the gym, it is a fucking priority to me. However, my wife is also a priority. So last night, the boys were proud to the gym, invited me out. Wife said she wanted to spend time with me. I, I chose to spend time with my wife. And you need to be able to make those priorities. You need to be able to make those judgment calls of, okay, how much, how much am I gaining out of this? How much am I losing out of this? Right? I mean, hell, I still sit down and watch Halo lore videos and waste time doing that. Could I be studying TMs and FMs? Absolutely. But I'm going to burn myself out just sitting down and reading TMs and FMs all day. Uh, I like enjoyment just as much as the next guy, but I try to earn it. And I say that's the, the biggest thing, right? Like we're out here right now, uh, hiking, decent pace going. I'm getting a little bit of a sweat going here. And we are, we are earning our next meal, whatever that may be. Uh, actually, you know what? I brought hot cocoa. Tuna fish and protein shakes. Based. Based. No, oh, all I and brought was, and uh, grapefruit. All I brought for, for food was, oh, that's another thing. As far as lethally poor food, and we're gonna do a nutrition video here soon, but there's so many options to eat better. So many options to eat healthier. And you know, honestly, I feel like I'm saving money. I legitimately feel like I'm saving money and I've been eating so yes. fucking clean lately. No, it's it's very true too. Um, if you make- here. Tree, big tree. Old breath, good bird. God, trees are so Look fucking cool. Look what they cool. took from us. Most of this entire, be like the big tree, right? They came in, and granted, I like trains. Trains are cool. But they came in with all these logging companies with cool trains. Logging trains are freaking dope. You couldn't tell I'm kind of a train nerd. Uh, but they came in, and they destroyed these beautiful big trees. Oh. Camera, man. They destroyed these beautiful big trees. But there are some that still stand, and these big trees are very, very beautiful. I know this has really nothing to do with what we're talking about. I'd just like to say. Well, I honestly feel like just in general, enjoying nature. Enjoying right. nature and just what little is left of the old growth. Yeah. It's just so beautiful. And it's, it's sacred. Just like what we have inherited from our ancestors in our mindset and our thought processes. Like I said before, the mindset of my ancestors of a man 200 years ago just like the trees and I know that sounds very I know that sounds very very cringe and very cliche but something of the old world it worked for so long and it's going to keep working people know me people think I'm old school no things have been away a certain way for all of time and those things need to keep happening for things to continue there's a natural order to things. Well, I mean, nature, nature reclaims. Nature reclaims. But us as men, right? Us as men, naturally, are supposed to be strong. Are supposed to be looking out for each other. Huck, are you telling me that men aren't supposed to be submissive and effeminate? Men are not supposed to be <gasps> What? Men have to be strong. Men have to be someone who are honest, truthful, and reliable. And without these qualities, we are nothing. The, the way things have been for so long, it just falls apart. And that's what we're seeing now, is a lot of people just are forgetting the mindset of going out of their way to struggle because we have it so easy today. We have it so easy today, it's so easy to just take the easy route. Because throughout all of human history, right? As a human, if I'm trying to survive out in the wilderness, I'm gonna do every little thing I can to make it easy for myself. That makes sense when you're living out in the wilderness. 
But in this modern age, we're still naturally going to have those tendencies to take the easy route. Route of least resistance. Path, of least, of, path, path of least resistance. Path of least resistance. It's, it's ingrained biologically for me to do that. But then you do that in the modern age and life gets so easy, it starts to lose meaning. And then all these men don't have any meaning anymore because everything's handed to them. All they have to do is go to their minimum, minimum wage job, working at McDonald's for $15 an hour, and then go get the, the value menu off of McDonald's, eat their soy, subscribe to their OnlyFans and Netflix. Hey, you need that goy slop. That goy slop, that goy slop, right? But the easy path of playing video games all day and just eating fast food because it's easy. I can just call up or just go on my phone, Uber Eats, McDonald's, piece of cake, play video games all day. I can live an entire life through a video game. What kind of life is that though? You need to come out here and actually have a life. Oh, look at that. It's beautiful. My own eyes are seeing what my ancestors have been looking at for countless generations. Is these hilltops? So go. I'm, hold on. I'm gonna. I'm gonna actually go off go one more thing. So, with with what he just said, um, you you cannot just experience life through a, a, a cell phone screen. I realize the hypocrisy that I'm saying right now of telling you this through technology. But uh, in all things considered, social media to us is a means to an end. I'm, I'm trying to build a life up for myself enough that I, my family, and my tribe can live out our days with our children out in the mountains comfortably. Look at this real quick. This is fucking gorgeous. This is one of my favorite trails because this river, especially in the winter and the springtime, so beautiful. And if you litter... <laughs> or where you are, but I will find you. I will find you. God, I just I can't get over this, dude. I just can't get over it. It's so gorgeous. Okay, I'm gonna pause there. Okay, I'm just recording this because this is gorgeous, and that's about all. I mean, I do have and I things. love handmade, or at least what appears to be, you know, more rugged because this. This bridge, right? This is going to be here for decades. This is this is durable. This is actual wood. You know, shit like this, we don't see anymore. Houses aren't made like this anymore. Everything's fucking cookie cutter shit. Oh, shoot. Um, right. 200, 150 year old trees, maybe 100 years old at the least. Those are pretty big themselves. This thing's got to be way more than that. Six, seven hundred years. It's fascinating that trees can grow so long and we just cut it down, sell it off to the country that shall not be named. No profits. Well, it wasn't always like that. We used to get all the profits from oh, the Americans. That's what made the American economy so great. It's all these natural resources. The Industrial Revolution did a lot, but. The Industrial Revolution had its consequences. Yeah. All right, yeah, no, that tree was definitely in the thousands of years old. So this tree's much, much, much smaller. Look at how that broke up, though, that's... Well, dude, they just splinter. Yeah. It's dry wood, it's gonna dry out. I mean, that'd be like great firewood if you wanted to hold it out. It's starting to get windier up here. We're getting farther up in this uh, valley. Speaking of, understand land navigation. It helps out a lot. Oh, yeah. Like, honestly. We're going to do another land nav video, don't worry. All right, Huck. You can go into so, your on, next rant. On the topic of the mindset, the leafly poor mindset, the mindset of the man 200 years ago who didn't have a lot, who was a peasant, right? The man made up for it by having skills and being strong and working hard. And I lost the train of my train of Okay. Okay, no, I, I'm good, I'm good. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> um, lost it again. All, 
all of these hardships we face today, all of the fucked up shit that we are seeing today in this modern world is not new. This world has been fucked up for all of, all of time. Humans are fucked up. War, crime, famine, disease, all of it. All of it has existed for all of humanity. So for us to sit here and have this defeated mentality, this defeatist mindset of, well, I'm going to die anyway, or, oh, there's no reason in, to, in doing it because I could just trust the system. The man 200 years ago did not do that. And that's why he was alive. That's why your ancestors were able to survive and get, get shit done and secure freedoms, uh, you know, particularly in this land, right? Revolutionary War, if we're referencing that, to secure freedoms and liberty and opportunity for us to do what we're doing. And, you know, that might not be the same story for everyone in every country. And I understand there's a lot of people from around the world who might be watching this. Well, I gotta make sure that my beard looks good for the, the YouTubes. Oh, let me check my beard. Oof. 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 No more mountain No there. beard having ass. Well, All right, I'll go into it. I want that gas mask to, to seal. We're gonna do a gas mask video. We will. And I'll, we'll, we'll, we'll show the difference of getting a seal with a beard and one without. Big All right, face. go into yeah. it. The man 200 years ago. Um, that's where your ancestors came from. They were strong, they were skilled, and they fought hard to continue on their bloodline to where you're at today. You would not be here if 200 years ago, if throughout all of human history, your ancestors did not do the things they had to do to survive and to triumph and to to the man today, you have to understand that in 200 years, in 300 years, and 400 years, if you raise kids and are successful and raise strong kids today, it will go on and it will last. It will echo through all of history. So when people talk about right having a lasting, having a legacy, your legacy is your children, is your bloodline. I, I, I hate to cut you off, but what, what's that from? I don't know. I'm quoting something. I don't know. No, it's, it's the, the, the echo throughout all time. It's from something. It was like, my name will echo through. It, it, it sounds, sounds like, like something from Troy. Uh, it sounds like Bender from Futurama. Remember me. Remember, Remember me. me. Remember me. At least where my mindset is, right? I want to live as free as possible. I want to be as strong as possible and surround myself with other strong people, my tribe, you know, all of those who I surround myself with to build me up and to help build them up. Because I, what I want for my children, for the next generations, I want that same mindset to be passed down from me. That is the legacy that men and families and women, all of us, we leave behind that legacy of hard work, determination and strength. And that's the only way that you are going to make a realistic impact on this world. Now, that's not saying you have to have kids. You can still have a very strong impact on the people alive today without having kids. Well, that, that is that, uh, that one quote, though, or the, the meme that we saw recently of uh, you're having another child. How many how many you're going to have? More than my enemies. More than my enemies. I yeah. fucking love that. More than my enemies. That's that's some Tarver shit right there. <laughs> but uh You only have three children? Ha! Mortal. Some people, you know, they may might not have the ability to have children, they might not want to have children, but find ways to positive positively impact people and build people up. Whether that's through some sort of youth group, through church, through clubs through work through anything and just just having that spirit be a lighthouse of strength a lighthouse Ooh, of courage i like that yes i like that yeah just 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 irradiating raw power and this goes for women too and i know for women it's different there's probably some females that watch this who all of this might not apply to but 
I mean, women also... Actually, so um, about 8% of our audience is women. Okay, I thought it was actually 10%, but... I don't know. I mean, it's like, it's, it's, just like, just like 13% somehow became well, it's, 7%. It's, yeah, it's, it's going to fluctuate, right? Um, I do think it's really cool though, that women, women are intrigued by our content. Um, I had a woman reach out to me on Instagram and she was asking me, how do I nicely go about convincing my husband to become more of a masculine man and do what you do? Um, and, and I, I, I do love that. I, yeah. I do. At the same time, it's, it, it is, it's, it's a hard conversation to have, right? Um, cause I don't, I'm very confident, uh, for the most part, you know, but I'm not trying to go into some s sort of mindset of, you know, oh, I am all that is masculine, man. I am all that is power, right? I mean, I'll, I'll I'll, I'll give off that uh, that vibe, and I, I try to emulate that, but I'm still uh, doing my best to be self-aware that I'm just another dude. Yep. I'm, ju I'm just. We're all, we're all I'm just. Dudes. just I'm we're just. I'm not special. Mm -hmm. I'm not some uh, uh, Tyler Durden. You are not special snowflakes. This doesn't you are, belong to us anymore. Yes. You are the all singing, all dancing crap of the world. All singing, all dancing crap of the world. And Get busy living. Or you get busy dying. So, and I realize this has been a, a decent rant, but that's kind of what the mindset video is meant to be, is a rant. Uh, so I'd love to have him on the channel. I don't know if he wants to be on social media, um, but one of our mentors is a man in his uh, mid-70s. Oh, yeah. And his... His philosophy when it comes to fitness, when it comes to betterment, when it comes to strength and preservation is, it's incredible. Um, he, he is, he's doing rack pulls and leg presses heavier than most people our age. Yeah. And, and he's in his mid seventies and he, he is the, 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 the meme or the definition of goals. Yeah. I want to be like him. I look at that man. I look at my, my grandmother mm -hmm. and I'm like, I, I want to be like you when I get older. I, I want like, teach me. I want to sit down. I want to pick your brain. How did you get to the age that you're at and you are still so Vib Ooh, vibrant. Yeah. I like that one. Yep. You, you are not just going through the motions. Yeah. Right? Every day has a purpose. Yep. Every single day should have a purpose. Okay, today's day, I'm resting. Mm -hmm. Today's day, my goal, my purpose is to maybe I'm going to fast today. Maybe I need to repure my. My heart, my mind, my body, my soul. Um, and yes, that, that sounds... A lot of this can sound cringe. It's cliche. It's very it cliche. <laughs> it absolutely is. But, you know, once you, once you accept that something doesn't need to be as cringe as... Holy shit. Dude, that's like stairway to heaven right there. I feel like Tarzan's gonna Look slide at that. Down. It's a little slippery. Okay, so I'm gonna cut off here. I, I need to take some pictures of this. This is cool. Look at, look at that. The people are gonna read that you're going off trail. I don't give a shit. I'm going off trail. I absolutely am. Mm -hmm. I just I went off trail. To appease the crowd because I am a conformist. This is my channel, and I can do and say what I. Oh my goodness. Oh, Oh, I like ice. Ice is cool. Dude, that is fucking gnarly. Can I zoom in? Allow me to zoom in. You're stupid. Necessarily a lethally poor um, tip, but in general, if you're gonna be out in frozen areas, you're gonna be out in cold areas, um, you understand your batteries are going to drain like crazy. Uh, that's just how it is. We're actually in the process of making a product to help this. But uh, the biggest thing you need to take in consideration is your water. 
water freezing while you're on the mountains is a bad time. It is a bad time. So what you wanna do, uh, the best your capabilities, keep it inside your pack, keep it inside some sort of wool, and then you wanna have it in your pack as close to your body as possible. Uh, so like right here, right? I have this, uh, this is all frozen. It's, it's almost fucking rock solid. Um, and that is what it is. I, I have more water in my pack. I'm not worried about it. Uh, I didn't have, this wasn't totally full. This is our trailhead, right? Holy bejeebus. That is gorgeous. All right, so we are finally at our trailhead. Significantly less snow than we anticipated, but you know what? Luck favors the prepared. We have snowshoes, didn't have to use them, that's fine. I'm gonna check this out right quick. Oh, look at that crystal clear water. That is just amazing. You know, Huck, I, I maybe we can, do you wanna go to the other lake? We can make it, yeah. If we have enough time, let's do it. I think, it's not that I don't wanna go there, it's just that we got here way faster than I anticipated. It's only less than two miles. Let's go to the other lake. Yeah, fuck it. The adventure continues. <laughs> so, I'm not sure if any of you have actually been up this way before, but uh, this is so fucking beautiful. Another thing though is it's really, really fucking cold. Um, regulating temperature when you're out in the mountains, very important. Having something that's breathable, but uh, also is gonna keep you warm, very important. You wanna cover the neck, mostly. Covering the neck's very important, or you can be like, huck, and just be crazy. Uh, Shave your beard and then be cold. Being insane is absolutely an option. It's a viable option. Uh, I'm not the biggest fan of it. That's a lie. I'm still crazy. Uh, now I do have the gorilla skull masks and they're not, they're not bad at all, but it's not going to give me the same protection as this. And that's why we're looking into, uh, other options than just the gorilla skull mask to, uh, to sell. Cause I don't think it's the, you know, the go-to end all be all of, uh, There's a random picnic table. So random. Yeah. Uh, being cold sucks. Um, be prepared for it. Carry wool. Wool good. Well, that's that's why that's another reason I love harsh conditions like this is that you're never gonna see other people but you know like views like this it, it almost doesn't look real it's like a painting you getting it you up in there so uh, sometimes trails stop existing and uh, you just gotta endure when our founding fathers and even some before, you know, they, they'd traverse this without trails. They made it work. We are privileged to have trails. All right, the trail, oh. Way over there. Oh, geez. Okay, so we gotta, oh, this will be interesting. Okay. Look, that's the, tra uh, can you see the trail? Way over there. We gotta, all right. It's easily uh, meters. Yeah. Okay, we're going back down. <laughs> the thing with uh, with you know highly intelligent people is I think maybe and and this is just a hypothesis, I don't know. Because I'm intelligent in different ways, you know. I'm not I don't see myself as a book smart kind of person. But I'm and obviously this is within reason. But and I think me and you can do the same thing is that, you know, I can kind of just ignore pain. I can dip out into another part of my head and okay, cool. I'm suffering right now. And, um, and I think that a lot of men have lost that ability yeah. of, of how to suffer, how to go about suffering 
you know, it's, it's uh, easier said than done. And a lot of people will just cope and make excuses of, of why they don't need to suffer, why they don't need to struggle, et cetera, et cetera. Oh, shit. Excuses would not work for your ancestors. There you go. They would simply starve to death. Well, I mean, do you think, okay, so one of my favorite things is the uh, the crackhead mentality <laughs> of, so I love, I love that, I love that analogy of, do you think a crackhead ever wakes up and is like, you know what, it's going to be really hard to find crack today, I don't think I'm going, no, fuck no, he's going to find some crack, he's going to do anything that he needs to do to get some fucking crack cocaine. He's gonna, he's gonna do whatever it takes. He's gonna do anything gonna it fucking takes. Or Ford Aero Stars. He needs to he needs to take your Cadillac converter and suck some dick. You know what? He's gonna fucking do it. I'm not saying that's the method. I'm just saying the crackhead mentality of I'm gonna find a way. Yeah, don't, is don't addictions aren't the best. We're not saying find an addiction. But maybe living is your addiction. My addiction is the well-being of my family and tribe. Well, that should be the pure obsession of all men, of becoming, right, as, as men, providers, protectors, right? It sounds kind of old-fashioned, the patriarchy, blah, blah, blah. But it's true, that's our, that's our natural role, that's natural order. Um, striving to be the best... Pro I, I press the off button. Keep, oh, you're, you're good, keep on. Striving to be the best provider and the best protector. You now, a lot of people get caught up in their careers. Yeah and they make lots of money, that's good. You're a good provider. But what are you doing to be a protector? Ooh, what I remember you, us talking about that. That's what, a good one. Yeah, what are you doing to be a protector? Okay, uh, I think we should go right here. Yeah. I think that's these roots. Um, but even in that, right, if there isn't a... I can take the phone. I'll just talk while I'm filming you climb up. I could give you a helping hand too. No, 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 I just gotta put this. I was charging the uh, the phone while I was recording. I mean, that's the whole thing with, right? Your business, your social media. Yeah. You are both being a provider, a great provider and a great protector. Well, I'm training to be a protector. Yes. You know, it's not that I'm, I'm the ideal protector. I don't think I ever will be, but oh, I'm, yeah. I'm trying to be. Do you want me to record you so you can keep talking? Yeah. Um, but working hard at both. Oh, I should plug the phone back in actually. Um, so actually, hey, for social media right quick, um, we have a nicer camera. We got everything set up for it for media. Um, but this, the batteries die in it so much faster than the cell phone does. Um, and for these kind of hikes and whatnot, um, having this set up for how we have it for media, it just wouldn't work. So, but just so you guys know, in the future, our uh, the quality of our content is going to. We uh, we made the investment, made a couple purchases, and uh, I, I think we're gonna be we're gonna be on that T Rex arms status. No, not I'm I'm kidding, not even fucking close. But okay, back to what you're talking about, Huck. Sorry, I interrupted with bullshit. I, it's whatever. Um. But being that provider, being that protector, if you spend 8, 9, 10, 12 hours at work, you are being a provider. What have you then done to be a protector? And I'm not talking about necessarily just like, alpha male can fight everything. That's not necessarily what I'm talking about, but just having a level head, being alert, situationally aware, and having the tools and skills and knowledge and strength to be a good protector. Uh, like I said, you don't have to be the big, strong alpha male who could fight everyone and who can outshoot everyone. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying you put in the same effort to be such a great provider, and I commend you for it because I've worked long hours in blue-collar jobs and not-so-fun jobs. I've done it. I've been there. But I still made an effort to work out, still made an effort to train dry fire with my firearm as much as I could. I still made that effort and stayed consistent with it. It's, it's not about like, oh, I have to go train right now. No, slow, baby steps. Make it consistent, make it sustainable. Something that you're gonna do for the rest of your life. Well, it was like that, that guy on our comments recently, it was like, I'm not gonna go 
train or go to the gym after an eight hour shift. And it's like, pfft, eight, eight hours. hours? Eight hours is a short shift. To me, the, eight hours is part time in my head, bro. Let me be real, like, that's not that long. I mean, eight, yeah, eight dude, I'm, I'm so used to, when the camera's not rolling, we ha we're having these same conversations. Yeah, this it's, is, it's, it keeps going. This is, this is no different. Yeah. So if, if you are watching this video, um, I want you to understand that we're not playing characters. We're talking into a camera. Yeah. You're just, you're just getting the same conversation that we would have while hiking. Yeah. You're just that's, part of the conversation now. That's that's all it is. There's you're, just you're there's in, a camera now in in our conversation. You're you can, in, you're in the YouTube comments reading about our conversation. You're part of the conversation. You know, like every single day is is a 16 hour shift. Yeah. And you're not seeing your wife and kids. You're you're not. And that being said, that this was the military, so you know I'm getting like two dollars an hour yeah. so you're not you're not. literally skimping by that being said don't join the military <laughs> oof blue collar jobs will make you the money yep find a trade get a useful skill get a useful skill or go into some shitty job that you can work your way up within the company that also works or start your own company start your own company or go learn a skill at a job get good at it and start a company based around that Actually, that is, that is a really good idea. I, I actually knew, I worked for a guy, and his, uh, his philosophy is that he wanted to get as, he wanted to get men that had as much potential as possible because he wanted to train them up to start their own companies in what he was training them to do, what he was doing. And it was, it was such an interesting philosophy of, so he was a, uh, uh, he did waterline replacement and he literally wanted other people to start their own trades, start their own businesses. He's like, Hey, learn everything you can from me and then go out and do it yourself. Yeah. Do not, do not stay with me forever. You know? Um, and I've had firearms classes like that too, yeah. of instructors saying like, Hey, stop taking pistol, uh, rifle pistol one from me. You, you got it. Yeah, I've been told that too. <laughs> like, stop taking these classes from me. Go learn from someone else. Yeah. Um, Diversify the mental toolbox of tools in your head and skills. Diversify that. No, and I'll, I'll still, I mean, oh, you know what? We should go take a, uh, we should go take a class together here soon. We haven't done that in a while. Uh, we well, no, we just did the LR class, actually. That went too long ago. I won't take another class, though. We should, we're, we're still going to build off the LR, though. We, we, I know, I know. We're talking about doing CQB, but... We could, yeah, yeah. We do more of that. Uh, anyway, um, take classes from different people, get different perspective, yeah. uh, watch different people on YouTube, mm -hmm. see how other people are doing things. And that's another thing when, when it comes to Lethally Poor, right? Just watch YouTube, uh, watch FMs, or not watch FMs, read FMs, TMs, read all the, the new military manuals and whatnot, or look up the audio books for them online. And just go outside and practice it. Yep. You know, don't don't stop with getting the information. You need to go practice. Yeah. Because without that practice, without figuring out what works for you and what doesn't work for you, yep. you're never gonna learn. Yeah. Um. That's. So I want to take one really really quick example. Uh. Here. Uh, take your phone. You made me think of some funnies. One quick example is I uh, number all of my batteries and it was only through training it was only through it was only through training it was only throughout going out in the mountains that i realized uh that i needed to know which battery was depleted so now i number them uh i do the same with my magazines i do the same with uh other random accessories and whatnot is i will number them so I know which one it is of mine. So I'll have some sort of identifier that it's mine and then which number in the series it is. And you don't even have to do one, two, three, four, five. You know, you can start with some ridiculous number. So if you do lose it, no one knows that, oh, this was his third magazine. It's like, uh, one, one, three. Well, what the fuck does that mean? So you can have, you know, your series, maybe your series to you is the 100s. 
right? And then that means that that's the 13th of your uh, step in the series, right? So let's say I have 200 magazines. Uh, so if my series is 100 and then Huck's series is the 200s, and you could vary this up, you could switch it up if you want to. Um, so I'm gonna be, you know, 101. 102, 103, and the, all of the hundreds, those that's gonna be my designated numbers. And then Hawks is gonna be, you know, so the, the first one in his series is gonna be 201 or, or 200. If it really depends on your unit SOP, uh, get crazy with it. But organization is huge. Uh, organization is another reason that we sell and another washout. Oh no, where's the trail? Would you, just fucking, would you just look at this fucking state? Fuck, I love nature. Shit. I have a hard on for nature. This is, this is it. This is peak. This is peak. Here's another thing about the lethally poor mindset. Are you going to get this kind of experience sitting at home watching Netflix? Are you going to make these kind of memories sitting on your ass? So, okay, cool. You're watching this YouTube video. I get that. You, once again, we're hypocrites for even putting this on social media, <laughs> but how am I supposed to motivate you? How am I supposed to make money in the career path that I'm doing right now if I'm not out here motivating you to see this? Just fucking look at this right now. I realize this is a weird, this might be weird to some people that don't really care about nature, right? This might be weird to people that don't understand how pure this is. This is the most deadly fucking place that I can go. This is more deadly than Seattle. People are going to die faster out here than Seattle. And I know that I can come out here and I can live. And I have the skills to come out here and live. It's not gonna be easy. It's probably not even gonna be fun, but I can do it. I know how. I know how to resource food. I know how to resource clean water. I have the skills to keep myself warm. And how many people in our modern era can say the same? You know, that's, that's something that we're, we're always racking our heads about when we're out here, always racking our heads. Every time I get a new group of dudes out, one question that I ask them, and Huck, would you say I've done this at every event? Can you think of one event that I haven't asked that question? How many people do you think are out here doing what we're doing? Mm, yeah. And I, I always ask, I want to ask new people that. I'm always asking new people that. How many people do you think do this? You know, not with, not with the granola cruncher mindset, right? Not with the, the neon everything and, you know, I only have a water bottle and maybe a couple of snacks, but... I actually have the supplies on me that I could come out here in this environment and survive. Not only that, but I can do it minimalist with a small pack and I have enough skills that I can make this work. I could live. I have, I have decent enough cardio. That being said, I'd like my cardio to get back there. You know, yeah. <laughs> the season got me a little thick, but, uh, Fucking love it out here, man. Oh yeah. Huck, you got a rant to go on. What do you what do you want? Oh well, my hand was just very cold and the camera was getting shaky. I apologize for the shaky. It's just st stagnant, just all right. Um, holding cameras. We're going to uh, traverse this next washout and uh we'll get we'll get back to you. I, I could give a rant real quick. You wanna give a go for it, bud. Um no, I lost it. <laughs> not gonna make it. You're not gonna make it. Spare parts. Um, spare parts is another one of those, uh, well, I guess, you know, I can't think I've any, heard any civilians say spare parts. There's a lot of, uh, military jargon that does get, uh, pushed over to the civilian side, but, you know, that's how I knew Risky Krisky was a vet right off the fucking bat when he said fall out. And I was like, yeah, he's a veteran. Oh, it, nobody says that. There, there's some, thir so there's some words that no, nobody says that, right? Like, uh, jargon, that's, that's, a. Uh, Usually mostly military one. SOPs uh, saying shit like fallout or zonk. 
you know, uh, TTPs and, and OPs and LPs and, and, and the CCP and, oh God. Oh no, not the CCP. Dude, look at how this ice is like fractured though. That looks- It looks like fiberglass. Yeah. I want to touch it. <laughs> All right, I'm actually gonna turn this off now so I can traverse this because I don't want to. I don't want to die. <sighs> Niche macro celebrity goes in the mountains to create a YouTube video and dies comically. <laughs> All right, current status: our bridge is uh, no longer existent, so we're having to climb trees, down trees to get across. So right there is the bridge that we were supposed to use to get across, but obviously it's there instead of there. You good? My hands don't exist. Yeah. You have wool gloves, right? Okay, fair. And we are uh, getting close to our destination. Wait, did you actually not bring wool gloves? What? Bro, that's SOP, you fucking retard. I'm what you call... Oh, wait, no, you just said a retard. Yeah. For ah. drill saw, I got... I can't use my pockets. So we, uh, we came across a, a camp and uh, these restrooms are actually open. Oddly enough, it's an ammo can with toilet paper. It's, uh, that's pretty cool, I ain't gonna lie. I mean, somebody left their trash and that's fucking cringe, but at least they left, at least they left it inside. I'm happy with that. I'm gonna go ahead and make sure this is uh, closed like it was. That is cool that they didn't lock those though. I'm, yeah. I'm surprised. I thought they would have. So that's cool that you can get in these. Oh, this one's open, so I don't know who's gonna be in here. Okay, no friends. Another ammo can. Yeah, these are fucking cool, dude. Shit, it's the fan. I mean, at are least in the. Solar panels? It's got fucking solar panel on top, doesn't it? I can't tell if that's a solar panel. It might just be. It definitely has electricity. There's a cord, there's a cord attached. Yeah, no, it definitely has it electricity. I wonder if we can get in this cabin. That is something I'm in, very interested in. This is a pretty cool campground. I'm not gonna lie. I'm surprised they put, we, we are out here too. Like, I'm surprised they put this, they put the effort in to put this here. Oh, I see a lock. Is this like a free use kind of thing or like what? There's probably like park rangers to stay here. Yeah, this is, that is a really cool, like, configuration though that is that looks handmade i'm not even mad that's nifty yeah that's all like an actual blacksmith yeah they dead. put some effort into this i mean that wouldn't be hard to pick but i'm not trying to i'm not trying to yeah, break in just for shits and gigs oh dope was oh, this one open it's locked from the inside oh well shit we can have lunch here yep picnic table Oh shit, we even have a joint. <laughs> An ancient joint. That looks like oh, a, cigarette. a cigarette. Yeah. You, you. All right, well, I guess we'll have lunch here. Dope. Today on Gourmet Gorilla, we're having sun butter, honey, and tortillas. And then Huck's having red onions and motherfucking tuna. Red onions, lots of tuna, some grapefruit, 
water, water, water with pre-workout, and like a hundred grams of protein shake. Oh, that's what this I This is literally that's just- That's what I didn't bring. This is almond milk, not silk, not soy milk, almond milk, almonds and water, and PB Fit, the uh, powdered uh, peanut butter. It's the cleanest protein. Found at Winco. Win? Yeah, like a tub for like 10 bucks at Winco. Man, this is fucking cool, dude. Tem Somsterone. Mm. Mm. Eat your veggies. Fucking love it on him. Um, I'm gonna grab a. Oh, I'm over here. So, this appears to say that we're not allowed to molest building. So even all the way out here, I really love that our Washington state government is thinking about my fitness and my health and my ability to acquire gains in the form of... Oh no, not my camera! <laughs> <laughs> okay. I actually want to go check out that uh, panel over there. Sorry, I can still feel it. So another thing about uh, you know living the Pacific Northwest is that we have this type of stuff at our disposal. I mean, there's literally there's maps of you know we're here, and then we could go up and we could hit up uh, that lake. We could go up here. There's this camp this camp this camp this one and this one and <clears throat> it's it's literally too easy to go outside and adventure like you have so much at your disposal so much that you can do and yet as soon as the weather gets a little bit uh just a little bit eh, you see nobody out here which i mean i like um you know usually we're not prowling around and nature or national forest like this in, anyway we're normally in the winter time it's a lot easier though because because of that yeah but normally we're off in trails of you know places that we don't see people and that's how we're able to be in full kit um so we don't have time today to go up to that other uh, glacier lake but we're gonna hit up uh one on the way back we kind of wanted to see how far we could get with the uh the daylight allotted we've got about three hours and 40 minutes left of daylight. So we're going to go do our uh, glacier dip, which is a little bit closer back towards uh, where we came. And then we'll still have uh, about two miles of uphill to climb, um, but we should be able to knock it out within the uh, daylight allotted. And if we don't, then, oh no. We have to walk at night. Ah! Oh, oh. I've never done that before. But I didn't bring my night vision. Ah. I am a non-combatant. I don't. I'm have a non-combatant. I don't have my night vision on me. However, will I survive? Wait, are you telling me the white light on my pistol doesn't mean anything? It means nothing. Okay. Just don't even. You don't have night vision. Why even buy a handgun? All like 500 lumens that is attached to my flat or to my flashlight to attach to my pistol is nope, just worthless. No point. Just okay. just throw it away. All right, I'll throw. It. Just get rid of your gun. Get rid of all of your, don't even train. If you can't afford night vision, don't even train. Why bother? Do you get like the fucking, uh, the spy gear from Toys R Us? There you go. And now you have so night vision and now you're combating. The combatant. $30 night vision for children. Yep. The good old spy gear, dude. Those were the best toys ever. <clears throat> I love those. So here's another thing to take into consideration when it comes to movement. Um, and this can be you know, patrolling, this can be hiking, anywhere that you need to get from one destination to another, uh, you need to take into consideration sometimes of obstacles. So let's say that shit just hit the fan and you need to get home now. Uh, do you know, do you know alternate routes home if there are obstacles such as this? Do you know how to ford rivers? Do you have the ability to ford rivers? Um, if you're trying to get home, can you 
cross a river if a bridge is down, right? Because that's what we're doing right now is we're using trees from down bridges or from uh, because of a down bridge. Hey, Hawk, uh, let's take this uh, this one over here. I think it's going to be easier. Okay, uh, just follow me then. Yeah, that's the route I'm going to go. That looks a lot better. Oh, shoot. Um, but yeah, do you know how to traverse harsh and difficult terrains? When it comes to mindset of hiking as opposed to like tactical and how there's a lot of crossover between so many different aspects of training and that you're going to learn different things with different aspects of training that you're not going to get, you're not going to get every single skill worked on with any one form of training. So rucking, patrolling, hiking, uh, land navigation, you are all, out of all of these, you're going to get cardio, right? But you're going to touch on certain skills. So with hiking, we're not in full hardcore tactical drab. We don't have rifles on us, but we are working cardio and we're working familiarization with our land around us. Um, not only that, but when you start going on adventures like this, and we've done multi-day adventures, today's just a day adventure. But um, when you're doing stuff like this, not only are you working cardio, fitness, all that jazz, but when you have a group of guys and you're out here and you're, you're suffering and you're sucking in you know, harsh conditions, you're also working on uh, team, team building. Um, if any of you guys have watched uh, the recent Top Gun or even the old Top Gun, um, team, team building unit cohesion is actually really important. And I think it's not talked about enough how important it is to be able to work as a team. Um, you know, and that's as something as simple as crossing a river. There are so many skills that you can work on that people don't really think about um, when it comes to going out and adventuring and hiking and all this stuff. And I, I realize if you're watching my videos, if you're watching the content that we're putting out, what's up? Yeah, you're good. Um, I'm probably preaching to the choir, which I'm okay with. Uh, if you've watched this far into the video, then you probably understand by now that this is uh, mostly a rant fest. <laughs> with uh it's it's basically just an ongoing schizo rant and uh, we've we've been told that uh people really like our long form stuff and i'm just gonna keep doing it yeah um that and i enjoy doing long form and the longer videos that we put out uh they get the best engagement so not only is it the content that i enjoy doing but people are enjoying it as well so if the formula works I'm not gonna just stop it. Um, I know that people have complained that are, oh, your videos are so fucking long. It's like, okay, then don't well, then don't watch it. Delete TikTok and stop watching YouTube shorts and make your attention span longer. So that's actually a really good uh, topic uh, is attention spans. Oh my God, people's <sighs> attention spans are just <laughs> terrible. I'm not saying mine's as good as it used to be because it used to be a lot better. Uh, but, you know, sit down and, and a lot, you know, an hour to just read a fucking book or maybe sit down and turn off your phone and actually watch the entirety of a movie. I don't know how many people just can't watch a fucking movie anymore. We got to be playing. I mean, I'm guilty of this too, right? Playing stick war or balloons on my phone. I mean, I yeah, I'll, I'll do it too. If it's a movie I've seen a million times. Yeah. And you're just kind of vibing. You're, you're literally just existing. Yeah. Uh, and so. Downtime, downtime is downtime. Yes, absolutely. Uh, so I'm not saying a 100% a one for one. You have to do this always. Yeah. It's more of, hey, maybe keep this as a conscious thing in your head and try to work with it. Try to get better at having an attention span. Yeah. Maybe try to actually sit down and watch a YouTube video in its entirety. Uh, sit down and try to watch a movie in its entirety. Sit down and try to read a book for, you know, more than 
a single page at a time uh, without checking your phone. Yeah. You know, work on that attention span because uh, attention spans are actually very important uh, when it comes to tactical considerations, when it comes to uh, being a part of a team is it's, it's going to get boring. Uh, the reality is that a lot of training, uh, a lot of patrolling, a lot of uh, OPs and hide sites and, and a lot of soldiering is fucking yeah, boring. I have, I have a little mini schizo rant for that. Um, as a man, right? Well, uh, we see these things on the internet or on movies, instant gratification. Okay, take it, I'm gonna ride you. Um, the, th the, the whole thing of like instant gratification. Um, I mean, you've probably heard it all before. The YouTube shorts, porn, um, just going, TikTok. TikTok, TikTok, going and just getting fast food off Uber Eats without actually earning. preparing, earning and preparing that meal yourself. That kind of stuff, right? Men need to learn how to be bored and need to learn how to have patience. Ooh, you know what? I'm going to go farther. I'm gonna oh, go yeah. Farther than that. Children. Children yep. need to learn how to be bored. Yes. Stop giving your fucking kids tablets and cell phones. They don't need it. Under no consideration do they need it. I'm not saying that you have to eliminate screen time. My kids watch movies too. I enjoy watching movies with my children. However, comma, <laughs> I'm going to make them earn it, right? I'm gonna have my daughter uh, go out and, and, and do chores, feed the chickens, um, take out the trash, maybe help me with, uh, with dinner or, you know, something. You know, you, we need to get back into this whole concept of, uh, instead of our, our modern punishments were a hundred year ago chores. Yeah. Right. And we need to, yep. we need to really, as a, as a whole, as, as a collective, and I realize that's cringe, like communism's cringe, but as a collective, we all need to agree, hey, what we are doing to our youth, it's not fucking working. It's not working. We're seeing really bad results. Kids need to learn how to be bored again. Yeah. And on top of that too, like us as men, like we probably grew up getting whatever we wanted, especially in a first world country such as the one we did. Yep. I mean, I got everything I wanted. I was entitled. I was a little fucking piece of shit as a kid. And I acknowledge that. And I'm trying my best, as you can see. I told you the, the, the philosophy that my mom had when it came to um, things that I wanted. Go for it, yeah. So it was, it was a fucking great philosophy. I've talked about it with, uh, with the Lethally Poor before. Of when you're going to buy something, no matter what it is, any micro transaction, specifically micro transactions, guys, mm. don't worry, I've been bad about it too. Yeah. I have so much dumb shit that I've bought and never used or maybe used once and never touched it again. Um, I'm guilty of it too but it is something that I try to keep in the back of my head. I try to be better at it. And my mom had this philosophy all when I was growing up of uh, whenever you're getting something, am I still going to want this in six months? Yeah. And that, that is what she ingrained in my head of, am I still going to be using this product, whatever it is in six months? And, and I try to keep that that mindset of, am I still gonna be using this? Is this an actual valid investment? Um, you know, like we've, do we've bought quite a few dumb things uh, for the YouTube channel. And it's like, hey, we need to make this. If we're purchasing this, we're gonna have to use this in multiple videos. Yeah. We're gonna have to get our money's worth out of this. Is this a proper investment? Uh-huh. Um, and it's, it should be the same way as for your children. That should be the same way for you, your loved ones of, uh, am I going to use this? Is this worthwhile? Mm. This is my hard earned yeah. money. Money is your life. If you are working a nine to five. That's your time. That is time your time. Is money. That is your time. You are not, you need to get away from the whole concept of you're spending money because you're not. You're spending your hours. Yep. You are spending the hours 
that you spent working. So were those hours of your life, was that worth buying some dumb thing for yeah. $60 just, on just Amazon so you can you're have, never gonna touch again? So you can have that dopamine rush of, because yep. when, you, when you buy things, when you buy things, that's the instant gratification of dopamine, right? So when I was a kid, we would always go to the dollar store and you know, I would, me and my uh, siblings, we would make money uh, doing whatever chores or whatever. Our parents would give us an allowance, what have you, for mowing the lawn or whatever it was. And uh, we would go to the dollar store and those little, those little instant gratification of, ooh, I wanna buy this cool toy. Ooh, I'm gonna buy this candy. I'm gonna buy this bubble gum. It's all that small instant gratification, but yeah, like, in our, the same way with Amazon though, because then yeah. you get you get the yep. you get the instant gratification of making the purchase. Right? Yeah, that, that dopamine, then, like, ooh, I bought you, something. You the, so you get the dopamine from making the purchase. Yep. And then you get the dopamine from getting the shipment notification. Yep. And then you get the dopamine uh, again from the the order confirmation. Yep. And then you get the dopamine of oh your your products now in route. You're like oh shit. <laughs> oh and then, boy. And then oh it, Santa's it, it, coming to town. Oh look, I ordered I ordered ten things. So yeah. I'm getting I'm getting different sections of dopamine. Yep. Um, and and we've become addicted. Yeah. To dopamine in the modern era. It's yep. the same way with uh, with Instagram. And I'm I'm thankful I've gotten away from it. Um, and I try to do my best not to uh to be constantly refreshing uh the the youtube studio app and you know just getting dopamine from from comments and likes yeah. and and all that shit. and I, I try to do my best about it but instagram's the worst yeah um and i now have instagram on a separate phone and i don't even keep it with me anymore but i yeah, was dopamine is it's an addiction i was fortunate enough to get deleted off instagram for reasons being a dangerous person. Being a dangerous person. They deleted me and I just said, you know what, fine, fuck it. I uh, eventually deleted Snapchat. I was probably like, what, 21, 22? Man, you don't need Snapchat. Yeah, dude. Once you once you hit like 21, dude, just delete Snapchat. Like, it's, it's a fucking kid's app. Well, you know what? No, I take that back. If you were in a relationship, you shouldn't have Snapchat. Yeah. Like, yeah. I had Snapchat when I was single. Yeah. So like I get it. You're talking to girls, and that's what yeah. they want to send the selfies, and they want to do like I I understand it, but like yeah, a grown man in a relationship, you shouldn't be on Snapchat. That was the reason I got Snapchat is for a girl. I should have never done that because I wanted that instant gratification. I'm like, oh, I'm gonna get the selfies and the, uh, the yeah, I was being a simp, right? But it comes back to having the patience and not that instant gratification, but letting things take time and taking the time to do things. Same with those micro purchases, right? It's easy to go to McDonald's and buy a cheeseburger, but for that same amount of money, you can buy- Or, 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 did you earn it? Yes. We, we still get Wendy's. Yeah. We are, we're, 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 we're big on Wendy's and Taco Bell here. Oh, yeah. and uh, Wendy's. Uh, uh, taco trucks. Taco trucks are actually oh. some of the healthiest foods that you can get um because usually it's all like home usually usually yeah they use canola stuff. oil though and soy not all crisco that kind no, of stuff no, no, motor no. oil it's like 100 motor oil 100 motor oil but uh the whole instead of spending brother Ugh, appreciate you're dragging your cord it's around back there what your cord you have like, uh, are, you, are you a furry? You have a tail? Oh. Um, but instead of spending that 10, $20 on bullshit McDonald's, cause McDonald's is expensive, dude. dude Fast food's gotten McDonald's expensive. McDonald's breakfast yeah. is so unnecessary. Oh my God. McGriddles, like give me a break, dude. I could buy, I could buy a fresh steak and some asparagus and- Oh, I, hey. Speaking of uh, the exact same topic, yeah, um, you can make those uh, those crunch wraps um, from Taco Bell. Yeah, you can make them yourself. Yeah, and they're actually way better. Dude, yep. they're so easy to make. Yeah, they're so easy to make. You saying you can make McGriddles? Though? McGriddles? Is that what you're talking about? Oh no, I was talking about just in general, right? Like the money you're gonna spend on that instant gratification, that that McDonald's purchase. Go home, go watch Netflix, and be lazy, right? So honestly, like I I feel like I get like. And maybe this is in my head. I honestly Poop. don't know. Poop. I honestly don't know. But when I make a meal myself, I firmly believe that it tastes better. Yes, it absolutely and does. I, I don't. I you don't put know in the work for it. I don't know if it's in my head 
I, it's I, not I'm in not, your head. It's I mean, because obviously you, I'm making you, with a lot healthier ingredients. But we're, we're using real ingredients. We're spending less money. We're spending less money, but we're putting the time and effort oh, into dude, it. You spend so much yes. less money making your own shit. Yes. The same amount of money I could go to McDonald's and buy some bullshit cheeseburgers. I can buy a steak and some vegetables and make a delicious homemade meal. It's going to take time, but what are you doing with that time anyway after work, after anything, right? You're just wasting time watching Netflix. Also, um, if you keep up on Winco, um, we have found so many just ridiculous yeah. deals on Winco or at Winco of uh, steak and chicken. Yeah. Uh, now chicken, you're kind of... Switch hands Because you know, the older chicken, that's that's not going to be your, your, your best bet. Uh, but like... Steak that you know you can just fucking freeze and then eat it whenever. Yeah. Oh, dude, there was that. Uh, <laughs> I spent over three hundred dollars on steaks, um, and it, it lasted me months though. Yeah. Like I saved so much money doing that, but I spent over three hundred dollars on steaks, uh, and because they were like two dollars and fifty cents uh, yeah. a piece, and they were I'm talking like twenty ounce steaks. Yeah. And uh, and and dude, I had steaks yep. for months. That's, yeah. It's such. It's a, honestly eating eating better is it's a lot easier than you think. You yeah. just gotta be crafty. Well, you just have to take the time. You have to learn how to have patience well, that's and like take us, time. Uh, growing our own uh, vegetables. Yep. It's not. It's yep. It takes it's time. Not that hard. It's not hard. It just takes time. Instead of getting onto social media and wasting time on social media, maybe uh, uh that was a weird camera. Instead of wasting time on social media and just bullshit, uh. How about grow a garden or make food, healthy food? I, I, I come, my voice kind of cracked there. That was kind of awkward. You're gonna think I'm a fucking f all the soy I ate as a kid. Actually, uh, these pez right here, these pez are filled with soy, <laughs> and they're filled with uh, vegetable oil, hydrogenized this, vegetable oil. This dude's just eating them. And in and red number forty. This dude's just eating. And them. I I eat them like it's it's, it's fucking Flintstone gummies. <laughs> hey, I got guilty pleasures. Let me have my soy. I mean, so honestly, you know, and that's another thing that we're talking oh, about. It's I not... can't hold this. Okay, here we go. I, I guess, I guess. Okay. It feels like, uh, like the no, the the uh, military punishments. <laughs> hold out the rifle. Yeah. It's yeah. Like, what? It's a piece of paper. <laughs> you can't hold a piece of paper. It's <laughs> pussy. Well, I got this ruck. Pulling down on my shoulders and then holding a phone up. Yeah. <laughs> no, holding the, holding the phone up when you got a, a pack. Dude, that's another thing uh, a lot of people don't talk about is yeah. that, like, you see so many guys on the flat range uh, shooting without rucks on. Yeah. And it's like, do you have any idea how much shooting with a ruck, yeah. like a full ruck set up for three plus days? Yeah. Uh, how much of that's going to change how you're shooting, how you're moving? everything once you have weight on your shoulders uh shooting becomes a lot more challenging but as we have said a multitude of times and i would like to once again get this out here i do not see myself as a shooter um i'm i am simply a mountain man yep I, <laughs> uh, rifle's just part of the job description rifle and mountain. Rifle and mountain. Hound mountain. It should be mountain and rifle, but that doesn't ring. That just uh, doesn't that's, sound. It doesn't, it's not, it's not the same. You know the wet, the, I, I'm really glad that the wind died down. It is, ah, it's nice up here. Dude, when we stopped at that, uh, that, uh, Chevron station, and it was just, <laughs> wimby. Dude, it wimby. Fucking wimby. A semi truck drove past us and got all the, this, uh, the snow and the, the rock salt splashed up on my windshield and then the glare from the sun I couldn't see. I was just like, I hate this world. <laughs> okay, so once again, I'm going to state this. I realize this video is going to be astronomically long. It's like two hours. It's probably going to be like two, three hours. Yeah. Uh, but you know what? You're coming along on an adventure with us and as a self-aware intellectual. As a high IQ intellectual. We had a guy come out, and if you're watching this video, you know who you are. We had a guy come out, and he was going off on these uh, tangents about how he's a he's an intellectual. It's like I don't recall. I don't think I was. There. Please shut the fuck up. How do you not know who I'm talking about? No idea who that is. Fergie McFergson. 
Oh, that was him? That was him. Talking Aww. about how much of an intellectual he is and how, how self-aware he is. And I'm like, well, you're not self-aware enough to realize no one's talking to you right now and you <laughs> shut the fuck you're up. You're not self-aware enough to know when to shut the fuck up. <laughs> oh, man. I'm such an intellectual. Yeah, I mean... I'm not going to dox him self, or anything like self, that, but self good proclaiming. God. Self-proclaiming yourself and, you know... Here, let's let's flip sides. I want to I yeah. hold it with... Hold it right here. There we go. Right. That's more good. Right. If you're going to sit here and say you're one thing, like, don't tell me. Show me. And I know that that is hypocritical. That is hypocritical. No, that's that's so true. Because... That's so true. Yes, but, like, you might look at us and think that we're all talk and this, that, and the other thing, right? I'm just coming at you as genuinely as possible. And just trying to put into words how I feel and what I'm thinking. I'm trying my best to not come off as a fucking asshole. So that's another thing about like uh, when people call yeah. us LARPers. Like LARPers, yeah. Like it's, it's like, am I am I not a retard? Yeah. Out in the mountains, like because I uh, that's I, I'm not pretending to be anything. I'm not pretending to be retarded. I yeah, I am like, retarded. I train with a rifle. I go on rucks. We do patrols. We do small unit tactics. That's not LARPing. That's just us doing it. And I like Shrek. And I like Shrek. You're LARPing as a Shrek watcher? Like, that doesn't make any sense. Yeah, that's like the... It, th that'd be the same th thought process of, uh, you know, carrying medical on you. Yeah. And and someone's like, oh, wow, you have medical with you? What are you, LARPing as a medical yeah. professional? Like, what? Like, okay, you have a fire extinguisher. Are you LARPing as a firefighter? No, you have You're a fire You're LARPing as a firefighter. You, you, yeah, what you, the fuck you does that phony. Mean? You big oh, fat oh, phony! Hey, this phony! Hey, this guy's a great big phony! He's a phony! Hey, everyone, look at this guy. He's a phony! Yeah, no. You can't actually play the piano. You can't. wait a minute. You're not actually playing that. <laughs> yeah. So I, I honestly think it's more of a cope, uh, of you know, people go on the internet, and, and it might it hell. It might be coping. It might be bots. It might be feds. Uh, it might be people that just genuinely hate our existence. I'm not sure, honestly. Uh, but overall, I, I kind of dismiss that kind of hate because I think it's illogical and stupid. Now, if you come at me with some logical hate, I'm like, fair. Huck, Huck Mr. Huck, and this, welcome, to, welcome to Gorilla Jackass. <laughs> got to get a running start. Yeah, you were perfectly fine. So I'm going to be less... I was hoping to eat shit so it would Here. be funny. Just, can you catch it? Oh, no, I'm, I'm going to drop it. I'm actually kind of retarded. This is why... Uh, what a great I'm, angle. What? I said, what a great angle. Here you go. Oh, I'm going to get the snow off my hand. Okay. Which one am I filming? Um, Hello. I'm, I'm, a lot less I'm very bad at actually looking at the camera. I look at myself on the phone. That wasn't tactical at all. He 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 got that was so slow going down. He, that wasn't tactical. That wasn't tactical. He made too much noise or something. I don't know. Yeah, sometimes you just make noise, just trying not to fucking fall on your face. So here's another thing when it comes to uh, to training, um, in general, is that uh, some things some things aren't always going to be tactical. Uh, I learned that in the military, and I, I don't really and I. Uh, me and Risky Krisky talked about that on our last podcast. By the t oh no, by the time this is uploaded, that podcast won't be out yet. Um, anyway, stay tuned. Boop, 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 boop. Stop idolizing the military. Um, we weren't always in perfect, you know, tactical formations. We didn't always do everything right. Uh, most of the people in the military are fucking degenerates, and that's even when I was in. So it's it's just gotten even worse. Uh, the military is just. It's filled. It's filled with literally degens and, and people that you would not trust with your life at all. I mean, dudes stealing from dudes constantly. Everyone trying to fuck everything possible. Like guys making it hobbies out of fucking dudes' wives. Like everyone's an al. Everyone's an alcoholic in the army. Oh my god. Um, not everyone, but dude, the military is not something to idolize. It's not. Uh, yeah. Even special forces has become so. Tainted. Taint. Yep. Military is what it is. No real experience here, but uh, I just do my thing in the mountains as long as I've 
been able to do it and well, i'm gonna okay, keep doing so it, it. it it really does bug me though because like uh, us going down that right yeah so if it was in a military aspect i wouldn't go down that i would go around and i'd stay in the brush yeah but then you also have to take consideration how much extra time you're gonna it depends on the mission it, it, there's so many yeah. things are Dep dependent like if yeah. i don't think that there is any kind of threat out here then yeah i might just walk out yeah, in the, the open uh, the north korean mig 15s and chinese weather balloons come in pew, 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 pew. But i'm just saying like okay what what's your threat matrix currently at right like mm -hmm. what what level of threat are, are you currently in and if you don't have one yet, you should look that up and you should have your own SOPs of yeah. of threat, what threat level you're at and what you should do with that threat level. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and, and shit hits the fan, we very well might be walking out in the open. If, yeah, I mean, if it, I'm not perceiving depends, there yeah. to be a threat at all, then yeah, I might. Yeah. I'm not going to low crawl everywhere I go. We need to get moving again. Yeah. <laughs> See, yeah, that's the thing. Our mission right now is to get to a particular spot and... We spent a lot of time not really goofing off, but enjoying the scenery. So uh, we're moving. Uh, you want to hold this real quick? There's a rock in my shoe. I also have to pee. I mean, we um, could just stop recording, you know? We don't have to record everything. Um, fuck yeah, I need to take my shoe off. That rock just made it to my heel. Okay. All right. Um, I said that we were going to check back in at the trailhead, and here we are talking again. Uh, but yeah, if you guys haven't understood our mindset by now... Um, actually, you know what? I will go into the, uh, the politics side. Uh, so our mindset of rifle and mountain of all politics are fucked. Everything's rigged. The people that are in power, um, they have fail safes. They have money. They have people protecting them at every single turn. They have all this surveillance on you constantly. Uh, I'm not saying this in a defeative, defeative mindset, defeatism, defeatism, defeatism. I'm not saying this in a bad way. I'm just saying that the whole system as it currently is, is it's eventually going to collapse. There's nothing that I need to do to, to help it or prevent it. It's just going to happen. So as of now, my, our political ideology is rifle and mountain. I'm going to get my rifle and I'm going to go out in the mountain and I'm going to protect my family and my tribe. And that's my goal in life is to protect my family and my tribe and try to preserve their lives the best I can. I think we took a trail over there. Or did we go around? Oh, we did go around this, didn't we? I, I'm not sure. I'll go around it again, fuck it. But yeah. Our political ideology is very, very simple. I'm not voting. I'm not going to try to pretend like any of these politicians actually give a fuck about me. They're billionaires. They don't care about me. They don't care about you. They don't care about our well-being. They just want more money and more power. So your vote doesn't matter. The whole thing's fucking rigged. Um, I'm going to try to influence my life the best that I can. I'm going to try to influence the people in my circle the best that I can. And I'm going to prepare the best that I can within reason. So a lot of people like to make it very complicated. And it's not. It's really not. It's just rifle and mountain. Oh, what about, what about your vote? You're wasting yeah. your vote. I, I heard a part of what you just said. Um, your vote does not matter, but what you do every single day, what you do every single minute you're awake matters. It does. You matter. You matter. And what you do matters. You can, matters you can influence you. the people in your circle. You can influence the people around you. You can influence your family. You yep. can influence your friends. You can, you can do a lot to better the world. And... I think politics has gone, it's gone too far. Yeah. It, it is, it is where it is at. And I've, I have given up on politics. I, I don't care. Now, that being said, you know, politics do enwrap everything. So yes, I will talk about current events. Yes, I would like to be aware of a lot of current events. 
But when it comes to the news, I'm not wasting time watching the news, mostly. You know, um, politics are kind of whatever, man. And anybody that gets upset about it, anyone that's gonna re about it, well, you're not my demographic anyway. So, oh well. If you can't understand the philosophy that, oh, there's that wind again. I think it's just this area. Yeah, there's a. Yeah. Halfway for it. All right, um, I'm gonna hop off the uh, the phone right here um, because this wind drains batteries. Wimby. 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 All right, we'll actually see you guys at the trailhead. We are currently at the trailhead of where we're gonna be doing the glacier dip. So if you ever want to come out here, this is the Green Lake Trail. Uh, I've been out here before. This is a yeah. absolutely just gorgeous, gorgeous hike. Uh, once you actually get there, the, the hike up to it is just trees. Yeah. But once it's, you get there, there's a waterfall, Ranger Falls. Yeah. It's still. Um, I don't know. I'll, I'll put up the uh, the exact distance for this uh, this hike if you ever want to do it. Yeah. Um, one thing to note, um, you don't need fancy packs, fancy boots. These are just Georgia boots. They're not really the most high quality. I used to I used to do this exact hike in high school with my friends, and we just had our school bags. We just dumped See, all look, of our school books out. This is where I wanted to go. Yeah, Tolmy Peak. Yeah, so there's yeah. Mowich. I wanted to go up to Tolmy. We can drive to Moach and then walk to yeah. Tolmy. Yeah, no, we might have yeah. to do that. Because that's, that's a fucking hole. But uh, anyway, as I was saying before, you gracefully cut me off. Um, yeah, you don't need gear or anything. Like, I used to come out here in high school, just book bags, dump our school work out throw in water bottles, granola bars, snacks, and just fucking come up here. It's 14 miles isn't that much. Just make sure you start early enough in the day that you're gonna have enough sunlight and you're bringing enough warm clothes to what have you. I'd recommend you probably go in the summertime if you're new to this kind of stuff, so. Don't go alone. Do not go alone. Go in groups of, multiples of two is good because multiples of two, you can break up into battle buddies and everyone has a buddy. So, I'd honestly say, if you're new to this, probably a minimum of three. Because then if someone gets hurt, you have two people to carry them. Yep. Um, yeah, that's something you need to take in consideration is getting hurt. Oh, yeah. Um, so if you don't have the capability of doing that, you know, having like a sat phone or something like that to be able to call for help, good things. All right, so... We were about halfway up the lake, yeah, roughly. And uh, what's interesting is how fast you see uh, warming layers start to drop once you start uh, gaining elevation. Now I realize that probably is just like a, well, duh. Uh, but that is something you wanna take in consideration when you're out in the mountains, when you're out backpacking, is dressing in layers. Layers, 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 layers. Because then, once you start getting warm, you can just pop a layer off, and then you're good to go. Um, also, you want layers that make sense. Layers that you can take off quick, fast, and in a hurry. Um, so, that's why the majority of the time, I'm not wearing uh, bottom layers, unless I'm sleeping. Um, because that takes a lot of time to take on and off when you start getting warm. And, uh, that's not what you want is to be overheating when you're out in the cold. Because if you overheat, what, what's going to happen is you're going to start sweating. Because it's going to happen to that sweat once you stop moving. Sweat. Not good things. Water. Huh? Yeah. All right, so we have just about summited this hill. I was a uh, little bit of a doozy. Uh, had worse, but still, it's kind of hard to make videos while you're panting. Because, um, you know, once again, uh, there I go, say so once again again. Once again, once again. 
Uh, when it comes to doing hard things, when it comes to doing challenging things, knowledge, uh, you want to be pushing yourself, right? So like if, you know, hiking, that's going to be a little bit more leisure, but when you're rucking, when you're trying to put in effort, you know, put in that effort. Uh, yeah, you should be panting. You should be breathing hard. And if you're not, you're not pushing yourself enough and you need to be pushing yourself harder. I'm going to flip the camera around that quick. Badoop. Anyway, do challenging things, push yourself, you know, not necessarily push yourself, you know, to the limit, you know, at every given opportunity, but push the boundaries. You know, it's the same with physical fitness as land navigation as it is shooting, you know, maybe set unrealistic goals for yourself because if you, if you shoot for the moon, right, and you miss, but you still got farther than you thought you ever could, you are achieving goals. You are pushing yourself farther and farther and farther. And this can be applied to a lot of things. It could not be applied to a lot of things. You know, there's, there are some applications where, yes, take it slow. There's some things that you need to start, start cold turkey. You know, uh, everything's said and done. When it comes down to it, do what makes sense to you. That's, that's something that I've started putting a lot more in my content is everything said and done. Do what makes sense for you. All right. I think we're getting closer to the lake now. I'm going to hop off until we get there check in momentarily. Right now I'm just trying to find a rock or something to break up this ice. Cause there is no way in hell I'm just gonna walk out onto a sheet of ice and then fall in. So I'm gonna break up the ice. That way I can actually see how deep it is when I walk in <laughs> without just dying. <sighs> and everything's frozen and under snow and I can't find anything. Yeah, all right, we'll go check out over there. I found the only stick that wasn't completely frozen on the ground. Right here's a rock. You can see what looks like water. Yeah, it doesn't sound like very thick ice. So I might just have to slowly walk out and break the ice as I go and maybe go in a couple feet. All right, guys. Well, this is something uh, we're we're learning, right? Technology fails, uh, but the uh, the DJI Mavic Air 2S uh, will not stay on. I don't know if it's some sort of safety function if it's too cold, but it just it it starts to boot up and then right about here, yeah, it's just dying. So. Sorry, y'all. I thought we were gonna get some really dope drone footage, but apparently not. Okay, get this real quick. We're gonna find out where, how to keep ice is. From a safe position, not on the ice. 
Huh. Should I walk out and get it? As I already confirmed over there, this ice is very thin. So uh -huh. I would have known if I was walking on water right now. Gotcha. It, it is very thin with ice, so. To be honest with you, I don't know if we can safely do this. So due to safety concerns and how far we are already out here, um, this lake is frozen over and we're not sure really where the water starts. Um, we're, our electronics are already dying and uh, yeah. We might have to just take the L and roll around naked in the snow here. I think I might just roll around naked in the snow and, and take that L because that also sounds horrible but i don't feel like i'm gonna be real with you guys i don't feel like dying for a youtube video yeah there's there's no way to safely get out on that lake it's just not gonna happen there's there's bunny tracks out there already yeah. but that's it's a lot less weight than us and I, the last thing i want to do is like get out there and and then be under ice and die yeah dying dying is not good this is fucking gorgeous but yeah the drone won't work um, so we can't get the aerial footage of what we wanted to do and it's, it's, wow. I'm impressed with how cold it is up here. I mean, obviously we're out in the mountains, so like go figure. Um, I, I'm not like, I think we I'm not just, shocked that it's cold, but yeah, I don't think this is going to be the, uh, the move. We should just watch Shrek naked in the snow. Like to its entirety. <laughs> just like. When's it over? <laughs> like my fingers are just purple. That's, When's it over? That sound, you know what? I'm here for that. It sounds terrible. <laughs> All right. So current plan is we are going to sit in the snow naked. Um, I'm thinking that we're going to do uh, roughly 30 seconds um, each side of a body because that sounds absolutely terrible. I mean, snow is technically water, right? right that sounds awful i don't uh no i'm, I'm doing no <laughs> it sounds terrible um i still want to get the the original goal out of this but you know in a uh, a safe manner I, I just don't feel comfortable about uh the original plan uh you know it is what it is out of boy <laughs> okay we might die okay <laughs> that was about a minute in the ice cold snow. We need a we need a caption. <laughs> so just get over here. <laughs> Shake it off. Shake it off. Shake it off. All right, so Shrek is just casually playing in the background because um, I have not, uh, I have not stopped to turn off. Um, something that is going to help a lot when trying to uh, warm up your hands is uh, putting them in your armpits. Um, oh, not just, only that, I'm just grabbing my ass cheeks. Um, I, I know if you guys have. Uh, if you guys have followed us for at all, um, you know how much we preach uh, wool. Um, wool is one of the most important things when it comes to training in cold weather. Uh, so wool and merino wool is going to retain its heat even when wet. Um, so I'm wearing wool socks. I have a wool top and I'm going to put on a wool hat, which is right here actually. Uh, and I have wool gloves. I do not actually have wool bottoms yet. Um, 
so that's on that's on me that's an oopsie whoopsie there um but the biggest thing is uh once you're wet once you're cold um you want to do your absolute best to get dry uh so and and uh that that is going to change a little bit if you have you know wool but overall the biggest killers in cold are going to be uh wetness and wind oh oh those inner thighs yeah uh so armpits and inner thighs that's what's going to uh heat up your hands the best um and with the, the situation that we just put ourselves in if if we are to stop um without a proper amount of heat um there is a huge chance of hypothermia um and that is not something that we want to deal with um and also because of that that is why we decided to not do the glacier dip uh is safety concerns and once again i don't feel like dying or <laughs> losing a uh, toe or a finger for a youtube video you over here losing a toe right now all right i guess i'll cut them off ah <sighs> Oh, others. Crisp. All right, what's up, gang? A uh, little status update. Um, I just went into like a mini shock or something. Um, I would say as of now, this is probably uh, one of the coldest that I've ever been in my life. Um, yeah, that was interesting. Uh, got some calories in me. Drank a little bit of hot cocoa and uh, we're, we're back up and rolling. Um, I think uh, in the future, if we're going to do some sort of glacier dip or something like that, um, that's going to be uh, very close to uh, home, uh, close to a vehicle, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, thankfully we had hot cocoa going. Hot cocoa is a... Uh, yeah, bud. Ooh wee, I sure like hot cocoa. Ooh wee, I, I sure ooh wee. Ooh wee. Yeah, that was definitely the coldest I think I've ever been. Let's do it again. So we're gonna get uh, get packed up here and uh, start mosey on back. Uh, we've got another about five-ish miles <coughs> back. Five, six, something like that. Oh, hell. Yeah. Cold is cold. Yeah. I'll fucking do it again. I'll fucking do it again. Okay. You silly, I'm still gonna send it. You still, I'm still gonna fucking send it, bro. Um, yeah, it's nice. Like, going from laying down in the snow, the ice and snow, then like drying off and putting clothes on. Like, you know, I have a waffle top. I have my just 5'11 pants and boots on, you know. I don't have any layers under these pants except for those ranger panties I put on. I feel decently comfortable just right now with that. I'm still cold. I'm still kind of shivering as you can tell by the uh, <laughs> this uh, camera. <laughs> I'd say the only thing right now that I regret about today is that I couldn't make the drone work. Yeah. But I cannot hold this camera steady. <laughs> about my I'll only, rest it right here. The only thing I wish that I could have uh, managed, and I, I have no idea, I'm not like some drone savant, I don't. <laughs> savant. That's a new I one. I don't know, I, I barely can make a cell phone work. I can barely hold a cell phone, apparently. Here, I'll switch hands. See if this hand is better. Uh, no. It's still shivery. Imagine that, being cold and shivery. All right. So I got my hoodie on with my uh, waffle top underneath that. And then, you know, pants and shoes. Bags are all packed up. Ah. Uh. 
I feel like a million fucking bucks. Dude, I don't... <laughs> I honestly don't know how you would be able to do any of this without wool. Yeah, without wool, like, dude. I, I honestly... Fuck. I can't imagine trying to do any of this. Yeah. Without wool. I'm going to rest it right here because my hand is still sure. shaky on account um, of, you know, cold. I would say, though, uh, and I've never really had this standpoint in the past, um, but as of right now, I I honestly wish that I had uh, combat pants uh, just because of the various pockets mm, yeah, um, that pockets I, I don't have with, with blue jeans. Um, it's not that there's anything really wrong with blue jeans, but also the, uh, the material that it's made out of. Um, I feel like overall, I, I enjoy, wow, I'm shivering, uh, <laughs> <Same>. combat <laughs> pants more. Okay. I'm going to, I'm just about ready to go. Yeah. Same. Um, always have cargo pants for bunk bunks. You can explain what that even means. Nor normies, normies will call these squish millows. No, dude, squish mill in my ass. It's a bunk bunk. Watch. Bunk, 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 bunk. I'm waiting until <laughs> you, you get to the point where my daughters are referring to this as bunk bunks. Oh, really? No, 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 no. I'm saying I'm waiting until she gets to that oh, okay. point. <laughs> you're, like, you're like, that's not a squish mellow, that's a bunk bunk. Yeah. Dude, I cannot hold this. <laughs> yeah, my hand's pretty shaky, but you know, whatever. <laughs> That's what we're here for. Okay, so let's see. We have shit. We have 20 minutes until sundown. Okay. Speed run. Bunk bunk's here for the journey. Yeah, we need to get we need bunk to get bunk. Bunk bunk. Yeah. No, I'm I'm ready to roll. Uh, hi. Today I will be reviewing Shrek. It gets 10 out of 10 bananas. Oh, People say, I wonder why women wa live longer than men. <laughs> women and men are very different. Men don't have the luxury to be weak. Soft. I didn't want to say it, but men don't have the luxury to be weak. And right? Soft. Like, you might think what we're doing here is the most batshit crazy shit, and we're fucking morons for doing it. Fair. But it's it's just in our blood to find challenging things to do and to do challenging things. And there is risk involved. There's a lot of risk. You know, disclaimer, uh, probably don't try this at home, right? Unless you're like at that level. This until, unless you know what you're doing. Yeah. Don't do this unless you have, you know, like we were talking about earlier, of go... Whoop. Go through the levels. Yeah, baby steps, baby, baby steps. steps. Yeah, I mean, I've been coming up to this lake for years, dude. I, I, I know this lake very well. I've walked around this lake. That's why, like, you know, walking out trying to find the ice. I know where the water is. I didn't go to the water. And it just wasn't safe to go out into the water. So I, I understand how dangerous this can be. That's why I didn't actually walk out in there because... Yeah, you uh, you wouldn't be seeing me anymore if I did that. So uh, well, playing honestly, around in the I mean, snow you know, is just with, as good. With how much, with how much the the, the cold and the snow affected me, um, you know, an ice dip after today. Yeah. How much we've been? I mean, because we did. Hell, we're probably at least at twelve miles or so right now. Yeah. Which I realize that's. That might not be the most. All right, I am. Uh, I'm good to go. You good to go? All right, yeah. I should probably uh, let my hand, my body warm up before I keep filming because this whole video is just a fucking tremor. I'll hold it in this hand. Yeah, we got a ways to go, so uh, we'll uh, we'll keep updates on the way back. And uh, yeah, my water bottle is not fully frozen. If you want some water, I have the insulin. Oh, no, 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 I'm, I'm, we're Gucci. There's... So, you know, putting yourself through these kind of challenges, I, I stand by it. I absolutely stand by it. You know, push yourself to your limits, uh, but understand the risks. Huck, you want to? Yeah. Um, just like you said, how 
dangerous this is. We have spent countless nights together and with other people in all sorts of different, different situations out in harsher climate than even this, harsher conditions. Well, that's, yeah, that is something I find fascinating. Yeah. Is we have, we've legitimately been in, in worse conditions than this. I've been in way worse conditions. We've been in worse conditions yeah. than this, but this is definitely, I would say the most cold I think I've ever been. This was actually the most cold I've ever but been we've, too. We've, yeah. been, we've been in worse conditions before. Yeah, um, for sure, absolutely. Rainy, wet, snowy, sleet, uh, four feet of snow, you I name think it. it. I think it just might be a, a maybe a lack of calories today or how, how far we've gone. We're, uh, we're with, tired. With, with the temperature. We're tired, health. we're exhausted, yeah. yeah. That uh, that will do it to you, but uh, you know we're not not to toot my own horn or woo, slid a little bit, not to toot my own horn or anything, but we are what you would at least consider experienced mountain men. You know, experienced mountain men. Would you say we're we're getting there? Um. I don't know, because it's really hard to gauge what, what you would classify as experience. I mean, like, I'm not, I'm not going to look at, like, a, a, like, someone that, you know, teaches seer school or, like, has... Oh, God, they're leagues above me. Uh, I know, but I'm, I'm not going to say that I'm experienced in comparison to someone like that. Yeah, but I, um, I do go out in the mountains, you know, a lot. Yeah. This is, um, this is what we do. I'm saying more in general, though, as far as, like, where I once was. I know a lot more than I used to know, and I will continue to learn more. I'll say that we're, we're experienced um, in comparison to your, your average person. Yeah, that's fair. But, yeah, not, not, not to be all glowy, oh, I'm this, that, and the other thing, but we do understand how dangerous this can be. We absolutely do understand, and, you know, we'll keep doing it. We also have, you know, medical with us, and we have all these precautions, and we have yeah. all these redundancies and, yeah. and whatnot. So, wool, like, wool we, blankets, emergency blankets out the ass. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, that for sure. You know, so, going into shock, you know, I mean, that that could easily kill somebody. The point of the glacier dips or the snow rolls. We're gonna call them snow rolls. I don't give a shit. We're we're, we're it's snow rolls. <laughs> That's the point. Is to make your body work hard because your body has to work hard to regain that energy um getting cold is going to burn a lot of calories and it's going to strengthen your immune system because now your body knows how to react when it's cold your body knows how to do all these things there's a lot of health benefits to doing that and you know we might get the sniffles a little bit but we got all our fingers and toes and we'll be okay. Uh, my, I can feel it already. My feet are really starting to warm up. Oh yeah, no, my, all of my appendages, except for the hand that I'm holding this phone with. Uh, uh, my hands are almost like yeah. back Just, you know, you do all, all the, all the finger movements. Yeah. Yeah. Back. We're, we're good to go. It's just, you know, having all those wool blankets, having all that on hand, ready to go and I understand we're gonna get called stupid for this yep. still gonna do it you still are still gonna send <laughs> oh my arm's getting tired Here, we can... oh, no. Me. <laughs> and the phone goes down the mountain it's still <laughs> recording <laughs> <laughs> we are 35 minutes past sundown temperature starting to drop a little bit but now that we've got back up and moving uh we are just straight vibing huck how you doing oh, i'm doing fantastic i feel like a million and one dollars a million and one one dollar which is completely worthless in this society Ooh -wee. Ooh -wee. so i would like to uh once again talk about this of the lethally poor mindset and kind of end this video with our, uh, our our jaunt home so overall everything said and done if you've gotten to this point of the video 
Actually, Huck, I'm gonna have you just record me. Hey, yeah, yeah, absolutely. I was, I was saying, I was wondering why you didn't have. Yeah. All right, I got your blurry, blurriness. Perfect. So overall, when it comes to being lethally poor, uh, this whole adventure was everything said and done just about trying to experience new things trying to suffer a little bit farther than we normally suffer so even with this once we're done here we're going straight to the gym and we're working out arms uh we have agreed that we earned it and we're gonna get wendy's on our way back i'm not sure why Wendy's has just become like the sponsored fast food of the Gorilla Gang, but that just seems to be where we gravitate towards. I, I'm really not honestly sure why. I, I like Wendy's. I uh, like Wendy's. I, I like them Biggie, just, the five dollar Biggie bag. Yeah, and that's just where we wind up going. Um, but everything said and done, uh, at the end of the day, make sure that you're earning your treats. Make sure that you're earning whatever the hell it is that you're doing in your leisure time. You do not have to come out and do the crazy ass shenanigans that we do. This is very over the top. If anything, uh, I might even say that this is unsafe. I, I would agree. And I, yeah. don't, I don't recommend what we did here for everyone. Uh, I'm gonna start off this video with a disclaimer of I don't recommend this for everyone. But, Which they already saw, so telling them about it is, they already saw it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so. uh, but yeah, if you guys have any more questions, if there's anything you want us to dive into more, anything that we missed throughout this whole video, by all means, let us know, and we'll try to get back to you the best we can. As of right now, the Gorilla Gang is small. We are a small business. Uh, we are trying to balance, you know, going out here and training and doing these wild, crazy things. And then also running a company, running a training group, and then even trying to keep up with our own relationships, our own lives. So we fully understand that everyone has obligations. The biggest thing is just try every day to be a little bit better than you were the day prior. Huck, you got anything to sign off with? Um, I guess I could go on a couple of rants. I don't know Here, if you me... could even see my face. No, it's, it's it's pretty much blacked out at this point. You're just, you're just, you're just listening to us. I might just put uh, some footage over this. Yeah. No, no, no. They have to see the darkness. Yeah, we can't. Maybe, maybe we put like a meme. Oh, there, oh, there we go. Oh, works, yeah. Um, yeah. Um, today was a great adventure. We did a lot of cool things. A lot of things that, uh, might be frowned upon with the safety, those, what do they call them? Safety Sammies. Is that, is that what is that a thing? I right? have no idea. I, I have no idea what I'm saying. Anyway, this is you know the Karens, right? Like, oh no, they're so dangerous, right? Um, ooh, that tree made a noise. It's it's important for us men to experience these things and experience such hardships. And well, we're not we're not getting those hardships on the day to day. We're not in, getting in a real hardships. life. Yeah, we're not getting this. the man 200 years ago. I'll reference the man 200 years ago. He would have experienced this shit weekly whereas we can just sit in our beds and play minecraft and yeah, i'm not shitting on minecraft i love minecraft i have a minecraft world that i play i like i build stuff but i also go outside and actually experience life and it's a priority for me to get outside and do that before i get to play video games right how long have we played minecraft together we have have we very little we played minecraft together yeah anyway <laughs> um yeah it's just through these trials, these tribulations. And I, I know it sounds very cringe, right? You're like, oh, you fucking cringe. Yeah, you know what? I came out here to better myself, and I'm better, and I've overcome it. And like I was saying before, there's there's a certain amount of risk that must be taken. And I'm not... Don't get this wrong, right? I'm not encouraging you to do... Not encouraging you to do dangerous shit. I'm not encouraging you to go out and risk your life. What I'm saying is some things are going to have risk involved and you have to just get over it. Yeah. You just have to get over it. Yeah. No, absolutely. Like just, just with the whole, uh, man, I'm going to go off on a tangent. Oh no. We, 
Uh, this video is already very long. Uh, it's not like the whole Fed thing, right? Like I don't go out and train with people, go to open events because of Feds, right? Okay, cool. Well, even if there is Feds, even if there is risk, you're just gonna have to take that leap of faith and be kind and courteous to people. Don't do stupid shit that's gonna get you in trouble. Yep. And just like understand like there are narcs out there. They exist. Yep. Just like there are dangers in this world that exist. Like hypothermia, like going into shock, there are dangers. This world is a very dangerous place by nature. You have to understand that, understand what it is and conquer it. You have to go in with a good attitude. Don't go in with a defeatist attitude. Go in with, I am going to do this and I will come out the other end and I will conquer. Fish. That is the mindset. That is the mindset you have to have. I am unstoppable. Yes, I am unstoppable. Like, you think I'm gonna let some ice or snow stop me? Ha, <laughs> no, I am unstoppable. That being said, know your limits. You have to know your limits. You have to know your equipment's limits. Don't do anything too dangerous to where you're actually putting your life in real risk. But like we said, we have plenty of wool blankets, plenty of experience in the cold that, you know, getting a little fatigued, getting into shock, isn't really a new thing for us. Being cold isn't a new thing. We, we know how to warm ourselves up real fast because we've done it so many times. And it's just, you know, sometimes you're tired, sometimes you don't have a lot of calories and stuff it can be a little overwhelming, but that's okay. It's perfectly fine. Just know your limits. And we know our limits. Sometimes you have to push your limits. To know where they are. To know where they are. That's uh, that's something that one of our guys was talking about not too long ago. Of You don't know where the line is until you cross it. Yep. You don't know where that line is until you cross it. Well, oddly enough, I don't really know where any of my lines are because I'm kind of retarded. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. It's like every day I'm trying to like, okay, maybe this is the line. I don't know. I'm not dead yet. I think maybe we should do the rest of the sign life in the gym. I don't know. The moon's nice. I, uh, I mean, we could just, I, yeah, we made this a two-part video. This is not going to be a two-part video. Dude, this is a long-ass video. I know. It's like a four-hour-long video. I know. I mean, shit, man, if you're still listening to this, um, why the fuck did you waste time sitting here on your computer? What the fuck's wrong with you? Why Why did you not do push-ups? Why? You know, we're going to we're gonna have a thing on the top, like... Throughout the duration of this video, it is required to oh, do 100 man. push-ups. Oh, just ding up, like, hey, yeah. do push-ups. Did you, did you do 100 push-ups throughout this video? Did you did you brush your teeth or make food, make dinner for your family, clean food for your family while watching this video? Hey. If you did, fucking great. Actually, you know what? All right, I'm going to this right here. Give me the end of the video. We didn't really work out that hard, but we tried, and we did a little bit of uh, the, the, this part of your arm, the quadricep of the arm. So it's I'm awesome. gonna be completely honest. We're pretty fried. Yeah, well, we ate Wendy's fries, and the soy made us. Weak. The soy made us weak. He turned us into. Okay, I'll have to edit that part out. <laughs> what? 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 Work, work, work. If you guys enjoyed this, if you like these long form videos, please, by all means, let us know in the comments. These are extremely time consuming, but they're a lot of fun. We had a lot of fun with this video, and I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, make sure to hit up that Patreon, hit up the website, go ahead, check us out on Instagram and Telegram and, and, and Twitter and all these other places, and we'll see you guys in the next YouTube video. Appreciate you.